Ladies and gentlemen, now for our next success story. Will you please welcome on stage the absolutely adorable Maria Longright? <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to follow that. <laughs> it feels amazing, if a teeny bit terrifying, to be up here in front of you today. I feel honoured to be asked. So, over the next 10 minutes, okay, I'm going to share my story with you and leave you with a tip which will hopefully help you with your focus every period in 2018. Before my husband Derek and I joined Clean Easy, we were working as social workers in Sheffield, living in this terrace house in the city. Derek was a manager of a large mental health day centre and I worked with children and families. This was very stressful work, as you probably can imagine, working with some of the most desperate people in the city in an organisation that was steadily getting poorer year on year. I worked ridiculously long hours, getting on for double the amount I was paid for, often, and in my child protection role, I regularly had to make decisions that could literally be a matter of life or death. And even though this was 15 years ago, I can still remember that knot of anxiety in the pit of my stomach that I would get, you know, early mornings worrying, is that child safe? Is that child still alive? So it was physically and emotionally draining work, but we'd both been doing it for years, and neither of us had ever thought about doing anything else. It was what we did. It was all we knew. And there were definitely some rewards along the way too, when you could see the difference that you'd made to a child or family or individual. So I've no doubt we would have carried on doing exactly the same for the rest of our working lives, had it not been for a dramatic turn of events that led us to finding Clean Easy. And that was that Derek found that he couldn't tolerate some of the things that City Council was doing to save money, they were doing it secretly, because he could see how that would lead directly to some of his clients dying. So he became a whistleblower to expose what was going on. And from that time on, the council put all its weight behind a vicious campaign to discredit him and shut him up. This was so intense and long drawn out that Derek ended up going off sick with the stress of it all and we got deeply embroiled in a very, very long legal battle to try and clear his name. After the first year off sick, now very depressed and earning no money whatsoever, Derek stumbled across um, an advert in a local paper for delivering and collecting catalogues. He thought it was something he could do that was simple, stress-free, he could fit it in around all his visits to the solicitors and all the statements he had to write and so on, and he thought it would go some way to restoring his self-respect. At that point, all he wanted was enough money to pay for a bottle of wine and a takeaway at the end of the week, or maybe two bottles of wine. <laughs> as for me, I was still stuck in the job paradigm. I just saw it as a stopgap until the legal battle was over and then he could find a proper job again. So we got started putting out 200 catalogues twice a week and in our first period earned £470, which surprised us both and was about £300 profit from, from the kits that we'd paid for. But then, a few short months later, Derek had a massive heart attack, which nearly killed him. That was it for me. I couldn't stand working any longer for the same organisation that was destroying Derek. I wanted out. And by that time, I'd started to realise that this business could be our escape route. I could see that at its heart, it was all about people and relationship building and a much more straightforward way of helping and empowering people than, than social work was. So we decided to get involved in the team building side and grow our business so we could replace my job income. And within three months of making that decision, we went gold with a cheque of over £1,500. I can't tell you how liberating it felt to leave that job. It's amazing what you can achieve when you want something badly enough and you know exactly what it is you want. 
But things didn't magically get better overnight. Derek's legal battle with the council carried on relentlessly for another five years. Eventually, thankfully, we won an out-of-court settlement, though pretty much all of it went straight out to pay for solicitor's bills and barrister's bills and so on. And the years of stress had taken their toll on Derek's physical and then his mental health. At one point, he cracked up completely, was sectioned, taken away to hospital for several months. So there were still some very tough times. Life was obviously giving us some very good lessons to learn. But the thing that helped us survive, and this is the thing, was the fact that we had this business and that we'd been able to escape the job world because that meant we were able to completely transform how we lived our lives. We'd been free to leave the battlefield of the city and move to the Lincolnshire countryside. We live in this 400-year-old stone cottage next to my wonderful mum and dad. Our daily lives now are simple, stress-free, giving us all the tranquility that Derek still needs. We have no debts, nothing on finance, low, low outgoings, not working for anyone else but ourselves. And even though Derek is three quarters retired now, he still enjoys the discipline of retailing consistently with catalogues, come rain or shine. There are many clean, easy businesses bigger than ours, and lots of people earning much more money. But I think success comes in many different shapes and sizes. It's entirely personal, isn't it? And I can honestly say I couldn't be more grateful for the life this business has enabled us to lead. Thank you. Clean Easy has taken us around the world on some amazing five-star holidays, all luxury. And I think the lifelong friendships, which other people have referred to, that you make on these holidays are one of the things that are right up there in the top benefits of going. We also were given a fabulous Mini Cooper, which still goes like a rocket, 10 years later, and many adventures we've had in it. But you know, the greatest gift Clean Easy has given us is the simple daily pleasures of living where and how we do. Nearly losing Derek has really made us appreciate what's important to us, which is making time for each other and the people we love. We enjoy complete time freedom. I always think that's quite hard to express what that means, but whether that's going out for long walks with our beautiful dog Casper, who brings us so much joy, or playing out in the canoe, or rescuing baby hedgehogs over winter, that's Lionel that we have at the moment, or never missing a sunset, and most importantly, spending time with our family, who mean the world to us. Now, none of these things cost much, if any, money, but the thing is, we can do them any time we want. We have complete control over our time, and that just is freedom that you can't put into words. It feels fantastic. I'm so grateful for this and much more. For the wonderful people that have come into our lives as a result of this business, some of you are sitting here today. Our lovely team members who show such kindness and support to each other. I feel so privileged to be involved in their journey as they work towards their goals and dreams. I'm grateful for the times we spend laughing together and drinking and learning too. <laughs> And I'm grateful too for the incredible teachers we've learned from. I'm so glad that Rob Foster is speaking here later today. He's the single most inspirational teacher we've had since we joined the business. And of course, we're grateful to the company as well, led so determinedly by Michael. And perhaps the most life-changing thing of all in my story is the personal de development journey I've been on. Learning to be my own boss, so that's all about being responsible for and directing my own life, that really has changed me from the inside out. I've developed a completely different mindset. My self-belief, though still a work in progress, I have to admit, is so much stronger than it was before I joined the business. I now understand something that we're just not taught at school, which is how our reality is completely shaped by what we think, by what we're telling ourselves up here. Who knew that? I certainly didn't. I love this quote. If you correct your mind, the rest of your life will fall into place. Whatever our circumstances, whatever our personal challenges, 
our world can be one of limitless possibilities if we can only open our minds and realise it. So who would have thought that this catalogue thing <laughs> that we joined for a pizza and a bottle of Shiraz would have given us all of this? I hope I've shown you how, when it really, really counted, we used this opportunity to take control of our own lives and live more happily. Derek says it allowed him to rescue his life. So how grateful do you think we feel to be in this business? And now for my tip. It's something we've been using for years in our team, but it's not specific to any system. Anyone can use it at any time. What it is is five fundamentals for success. We made up a daft acronym for it. We felt it was punchy, a little bit crunchy, and it looks like something that's escaped from a Batman comic. It's Gapar. So what is it? Well, the first one is goals. As we heard so brilliantly from Fiona this morning, setting goals is crucial. We have one life, so don't we really need to decide how we want to spend it? Goals need to be personal to you. Don't compare no one else's, yours. And write them down on paper, not just this or that. Physically write them down on paper. Give them power. And once you know what it is you want, you need to make a plan to work out how to get there. The detail of what needs to get done and when. And don't overlook the power of the simple weekly planner, again like Fiona showed earlier, and the to-do list in this. So you've decided on your goals, worked out a plan, but nothing's going to happen unless you take action. Daily action on your plan. Work the recommended numbers consistently. Consistency is so key in this business. It's all part of putting in the action with a good attitude. Without a good attitude, you're almost bound to get bogged down. You're just making it so much harder for yourself. We all need to develop a strong, positive attitude. When trouble hits, aim for a quick recovery time. Keep on keeping on. A strong attitude is crucial to your success. In fact, Derek's fond of saying, if you can only pick one business tool for your toolkit, pick a good attitude. Because if you've got that, you'll find all the rest of the things you need. And all of this brings you to your results. Track them daily, weekly, throughout the period, celebrate them, learn from them, and take that learning through to the next period. So we focus on GAPAR in our team as a structure to help people check themselves out each period on each fundamental. It's a way of getting the best out of yourself, into your business, every single period. It'll help take you from where you are now to where you want to be because successful periods are the stepping stones, aren't they, to our bigger goals and dreams. You'll also find that Kapar is a brilliant framework to help you in your coaching. So that's my best tip. Get some Kapar every period in your business and also get some Kapar into your life for yourself. And finally, I'm going to leave you with this wonderful quote from Napoleon Hill. In every adversity lies a seed of an equal or greater benefit. And I've put this up here because I think it really relates to how we, the network, have responded to the testing times we've been going through. The way we've been supporting each other more than ever before, both within teams and between teams. Sharing information across team boundaries, and I hope you'll do more of that, as Michael said. Celebrating each other's successes. Thinking what can be done and sharing solutions. The camaraderie and the loyalty. These are massive benefits that come out of adversity. Stronger together, indeed. And what I think I've learnt in the last decade or so is that adversity can really bring out either the worst in you or the best. And you know what's great about that? It's we ourselves who get to choose which it's to be. When we hit a challenge, we can either allow it to stop us or use it as an opportunity to learn and stretch ourselves to overcome it. And it's in the stretching that our growth comes. It's how we become stronger. It's part of the success story that we're in the process of creating for ourselves. So let's make 2018 the year when we all rise to the challenges, because there will be some, grow our businesses as we grow ourselves, and of course, make sure we have plenty of fun along the way too. Thank you for listening.
This business has so many amazing stories in it. So, so many of them. Sometimes people say that it's the stories that make the business. And for me, the time freedom ones are always my most popular and favorite ones. If anything can buy you time in the way Maria talked about it, then whatever it is you're doing is the most valuable thing you have. There is no greater commodity than time. So thank you, Maria, for a fantastic presentation.